So I'm thinking about buying a gun. Even though I'm a former US history teacher, I never thought I'd be exercising my Second Amendment rights. But the truth of the matter is, I'm afraid of white people. Now don't get me wrong, some of my best friends are white. My wife is white, but it's angry white people that I'm afraid of, the kind with AK-47s. Recently, one of my nephews, Ellison, was in for auntie camp, and our, as we drove out of town, he asked me, Auntie Deidre, how come there's so many Black Lives Matter signs here and no black people? And I was stumped. All I could say is there are a lot of good white people here. Sometimes, uh, when you walk around, if you take a walk around my block, there are about 15 times more Black Lives Matter signs than there are black people. And it's me, I'm the black people. And, and that's okay. If you think about where I live, I live in a little spot that we call the compounds, lovingly. We decided not to call it the compound because compound sounds a little militant. It's four lesbian couples, three houses, eight cats, I did say lesbians, two dogs, a hamster, and three kids. And the fences in between our yards, they're gates so we can get to each other. It's a wonderful community. We love each other, and we'll love each other forever. But recently, a couple of signs disappeared at night, and that didn't feel so great. On any given Sunday afternoon, if you go across the Coolidge Bridge, there's scores of white people waving their flags, Trump flags, Confederate flags, and sometimes it feels like my little black life doesn't matter at all to them. The compounds formed a book group. We're looking at Octavia Butler's Parable of the Sower. And it's a dystopian novel. It features a young girl, a go-bag, a gun, and the end of the world as we know it. It is not an uplifting Sunday afternoon storytelling moment. But Tara, in her upset, called me one day and said, Deidre, you want to come to a firearm safety training course with me? And I said, yes. I don't know much about guns. There's a Christmas picture of a three-year-old me with my cousin Steven brandishing silver holsters and guns. And he looks delighted, and I look bewildered. He taught me that guns don't say pow, pow, pow. They say pew, pew, pew. I didn't really watch a lot of TV, had no idea who lo the Long Ranger and Tonto were. And I packed my lunch and my mask and headed to Franklin County Sportsman Club. It wasn't until I turned down the gravel road that I realized I was headed to the thing that, I, that scared me the most, white people and guns. And as the trees got thicker and the road got darker, the guns got louder. Pew, pew, pew. I couldn't turn around. Tara was in the parking lot waiting for me, and I'd paid my $100. So in we went. We ended up in a wall, wood paneled room. Our instructor was a former Marine, a shadow of himself, but all the simplify attitude left to, for days. He asked us to stand up and say why we were there. One guy stood up and said, to protect my property. Another person said, well, I'm here to go hunting with my dad. Tara stood up and said, to get my rifle from my, the homestead of my grandmother. And someone else said, I'm here to protect my Second Amendment rights. I decided not to say anything. It was best that I didn't. And through the course of the, the co course of the course, I began to think about Philando Castile, who probably learned the same thing that I did hands on the steering wheel, listen to the police officer, and he's dead. Brianna Taylor's boyfriend had a license to carry, and she's dead. And I began to think, maybe this Second Amendment thing doesn't really apply to black people. And as I left with my NRA handbook, I was resolved not to get a gun. And as I drove to the highway, there was a mob of white people at a Trump rally on every corner waving their women for Trump flags, electricians for Trump flags, their Confederate flags, turned on my signal, headed home, and reconsidered. 
I'm still thinking about buying a gun. Thanks.